The operations presented in this video are meant to be instructional to ensure quality construction. This video is not intended to provide a comprehensive overview of safety procedures. All parties should ensure that they are familiar with and follow all safety requirements, policies, and procedures that apply to their specific operation. In this video, we will be taking a look at the sawing and sealing of asphalt concrete pavement. Sawing and sealing is necessary when the asphalt material is placed over an existing surface which has previously placed joints. The sawing and sealing operations helps to prevent reflective migration of the joints through the newly placed asphalt concrete material. Before starting the field portion of the operation, the inspector should review Publication 408, Section 515 and the contract for any special provisions. As with all field operations, one of the first things that we need to do is make sure that all safety practices are being followed. This includes constructing the proper maintenance and protection of traffic setup and ensuring that all personnel are wearing the required personal protective equipment for the operation that they will be performing. The contractor must prepare a QC plan outlining the control of locating and referencing transverse joints. Have the QC plan describe the personnel, equipment, and methods necessary to accurately locate, reference, and later mark for sawing all joint locations. Next, we make sure that the locations for all the joints required to be saw cut and sealed have been properly laid out and marked in advance. The contractor must locate and reference the location of each end of each existing transverse joint before placing any asphalt courses. In addition, before the placement of any asphalt courses, Demonstrate the ability to accurately relocate the existing transverse joints using the reference data to the satisfaction of the representative. If the joint referencing and relocating process does not yield consistent results within a plus or minus one inch tolerance, stop all related operations and amend the QC plan to ensure accurate referencing. All saw cuts must be made directly above the existing transverse joints within plus or minus one inch. Saw cuts which do not meet this tolerance will be declared defective. Do not saw cut until the asphalt course has cooled below 140 degrees Fahrenheit and perform saw cutting within seven days after placing the wearing course. Perform this work on all finished overlay areas before discontinuing work due to seasonal paving limitations. For overlay depths less than one and a half inches, the size of the reservoir is one half inch deep by one half inch wide. If the overlay is greater than one and a half inches in depth, the reservoir size is one inch deep by one half inch wide. Additionally, if the total depth of overlay is three and a half inches or greater, make an initial saw cut one eighth inch wide to a depth of one and a half inches or one third of the total overlay thickness. If not placing the wearing course within the same construction season, provide a one eighth inch wide saw cut in the last placed asphalt course to a minimum depth of one inch or one third the thickness of the asphalt material placed, whichever is greater. Now we check if the sealant material that the contractor intends to use is listed and approved on the project source of supply letter as being an approved material meeting the requirements of Publication 408, Section 705.4, which is joint material, and Section 513.2, which is joint rehabilitation. Once the saw cutting has commenced, the width and depth of the cut should be checked to verify that the specification requirements are being met and spot checked throughout the operation to ensure continued compliance. Do not place sealing material unless the reservoir faces are thoroughly clean and dry to the satisfaction of the representative. The reservoir may be cleaned with compressed air immediately before placing sealing material. If using compressed air, be sure to use air free of oil, moisture, or any other substance that would prevent bonding of sealing material to the reservoir faces. Do not place sealing material if the air temperature is less than 40 degrees Fahrenheit or above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, unless otherwise allowed by the representative. Following cleaning, duct tape will be installed as a bond breaker in each saw cut on the bottom joint reservoir immediately before sealing. The inspector should check that it is at the bottom of the saw cut and doesn't extend up the sides. And lastly, the sealant material will be placed in the saw cut to fill it within 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch below the surface. The sealant temperature should be monitored to ensure it is not heated above the manufacturer's recommendations, since it will become brittle if overheated. Overheated material should be rejected. 
When applying the sealant material, caution should be used so that the material does not extend above the pavement surface. Material extending above the pavement surface can adhere to vehicle tires, causing the sealant to be pulled out and adversely affect a smooth pavement surface. In summary, and this cannot be stressed enough, it is imperative that locating and marking the existing joints must be done properly, which in turn will help ensure the sawing and sealing operations are in the correct locations. This will help to make sure that the new pavement will not crack where it shouldn't. Special thanks to contractor A. Liberoni Incorporated for their cooperation.